this is the first presentation of a series of presentations that we're wanting to do, looking at different crimes in South Africa. I think that this is a very important topic and this is a very important series of, of webinars that we're doing. I think that the situation that we have in South Africa in terms of crime needs to have a conversation about it as to what the situation is, where is it happening. We believe very strongly as a company that every South African has a right to have access to information in the most user-friendly format possible for them to be able to engage with government, with the police, with the CPFs in looking at addressing crimes in their particular area. So we see as a very important series of discussions on the different crimes that are affecting our country. Let me just also thank Chris for his time. Him and I will be having this conversation. And this conversation is not only about us. We will be presenting some of the facts in terms of the reports that have been released and the statistics that have been released. But in addition to that, we're going to be introducing you to our new web mapping technology of our crime portal, which is freely available to the public in South Africa. We believe that's critically important for the South Africans and the citizens to be able to get access to this information. So him and I will be just talking to you and ourselves about the situation. And our focus today is going to be specifically on street public robbery with the subtitle of street public robbery, the real litmus test for visible policing. This is a critical aspect of what we need to be doing in South Africa. So many of you will know, uh, Chris was the former general in the Crime Information Analysis Center, and I'd like to welcome colleagues from SIAC who are joining us today. My name is Craig Schwabe. I'm a director at Africa Scope. And many moons ago, when Chris was at the HSLC and then went to the police, him and I, were the first two individuals to have mapped every single police station boundary in the country. And that is the basis upon which we are able to show this information in a map format today. So why are we doing this series of seminars? What we've been talking about is simply this, is that on a quarterly basis now and in the past on an annual basis, the South African police have released statistics to the public. And we really feel that there is a critical need for us to have a longer term conversation about crime. It would seem to us that there is reporting on the situation with crime in a very aggregated form on an annual basis. We feel that a more consistent conversation needs to be had on different crimes and what the situation is and what we can do as a country. I believe very strongly in what we call a social accountability. Social accountability is not only about the association between the citizen, the South African police, but also government to look at what we can do with the expertise that we've got available and look at what we can do. So we're talking about a series which looks at information for, for action. So that's the basis of presentations that we're going to be doing over the next couple of months. I'm going to now hand over to Chris and he's going to be talking to us a little bit about street public robbery and in between we'll be conversing with each other. But in addition to that, we will be switching between the PowerPoint presentation and our web mapping portal just to show you its analytical capability. Chris, over to you. I'll start off with answering the question, what is street public robbery? Street public robbery are aggravated robberies. It's part of that category, the broad category of aggravated robberies. But what we always see is the six, the trio crimes plus two or three others. We always hear about carjacking, house robbery, business robbery, truck hijacking, CIT and bank robbery. But the biggest chunk actually of aggravated robbery, about 57%, a constant 57%, is actually street public robbery. You calculate it by counting the others together and then deducting it from aggravated robbery. Now, street public robbery does not include the category common robbery. Common robbery is more a case where violence is not used or excessive violence is not used. It's where people grab your cell phone out of your hand or your handbag. It's usually handbag snatching. And that is not included. That stays a separate category for the purpose of this presentation. Street public robbery occurs mostly in streets, parks, open areas, nature reserves, parking areas and sport fields, but it can even occur in a bank hall, a movie theater or a church. We have seen a year ago a situation here in a church in Centurion where a group of robbers entered the church during the service and some of them were then shot 
if people in the mall or the hall of the bank and you have just drawn money, you can even be robbed in that bank and it will be a public robbery. But that is not the most of it. Most of it happens in the streets, the parks, the open areas. Examples, workers going to home. I think that's the most common scenario. Workers going home on the public transport, the poorest of the poor, those people who have to use public transport. And then they are dropped about a kilometer from their house and they still have to walk in the middle of the night towards that house. The other one that we see more and more in the newspapers is joggers, cyclists, which get robbed, especially of the expensive bicycles. And then we have areas here in Pretoria, and it's happening everywhere in the country. But here in Pretoria, for example, there's a specific area where customers are very frequently robbed while they're sitting eating or the phone is on the table. A car will stop, somebody will jump out of the car, run to the cell phone and grab the cell phone. And if there's any resistance, there will either be a knife or a gun involved. According to my calculations and what we got from the portal, which worked with all these South African police crime stats, this 1920, the last full financial year, which wasn't affected by COVID, this is from April 19 to March 2020, that was just before COVID, there were 82,710 cases of street public robbery. According to Statistics South Africa, if we look at the Governance, Public Safety and Justice Survey of 1920, the same year, we find that only 42% of the victims of street public ro robbery reported it to the police. This is in sharp contrast to carjacking, where 78% of people report carjacking, because clearly the models of cars that get hijacked are usually more expensive models, and those things are insured, and that is why 78% is reporting that crime, and only about a half of that is reporting street public robbery. I've written two articles already on the Stat South Africa crime figures, because I don't agree with Stat South Africa that you can do a survey, a victim survey, which is a very good victim survey. I must actually say they do a very good victim survey, but then calculate it on the basis of the population, because crime doesn't affect everybody equally in South Africa. It affects different crimes, affect different people differently. And I don't think you can take the population basis and calculate from there, because then you end up with 567,000 street robberies in 1990-20. I think we can discuss it later, but we feel that you should actually take the figure that was reported to the police and say, uh, if that was 43%, then it will be nearer to 200,000 street robberies. Because if that is the ones that was reported, the rest wasn't reported, so you can calculate it on the basis of the reporting figure. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I've already said right at the beginning, 2003, 4 to 7, 8, there was about all of all the aggravated robberies, 75% were public street robbery. But then the others grew from 8 to 9, 2008 to 9. There's a constant 57% of all our aggravated robberies which is street and public robbery. Just to give you an idea of the new portal and your ability to look at it from a crime perspective, and let's just maybe have a look at street public robbery. This is the new portal that we put together, which is freely available. And what we've got on this portal is the ability to actually go through and find any particular police station. You can just put in a text search and do that. But if you're wanting, you can also do it selections by province, by municipality and by police station. And I just want to show you that, you know, we can look at it from a national perspective. We can also look at it from a provincial perspective. We can even go down to a local municipality perspective. And in this portal, we've got both 18, 19 and 1920s crime statistics, which we can select in terms of the year. This particular moment, we're using the latest crime statistics, which is 1920. And we've applied that information. So you can see that the, the portal has changed its view to look at those particular statistics. And we're looking specifically at street robbery here, 
which we can look at any of the crimes by just clicking on the down arrow to have a look at it. So this is the situation in South Africa, looking at the national picture, the redder the areas are, the higher the concentrations. So one can see that there is quite a strong correlation across you know, a lot of the major urban areas with street uh, robbery in this particular uh, map. But what we are able to also do is to very quickly go to select, for example, Gauteng, where you can apply Gauteng and it immediately selects that. We can zoom in on that particular area to have a look at more detailed information. And as we are looking at Gauteng, you can see that it's changing the total street robbery numbers on this particular map. So you can see that, for example, the 29,000, a large proportion of the crimes were committed in the area. And many of the police stations in Gauteng, especially the more urban centers where you've got a lot of the townships, are areas where high levels of street robbery occur. And, and this is information that, Chris, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is data that we put together by looking at a subsetting of the aggravated robbery statistics. Yeah, that's correct. So let's just go and have a look at some of the other provinces. Let's go down to KwaZulu-Natal. We can then zoom into KwaZulu-Natal to have a look at the situation there. And you can see that it's quite a different situation. I mean, of course, KwaZulu-Natal is a much bigger province than Gauteng. But again, strong concentrations of street robbery occurring within the more metropolitan areas of the province. And it's dropped down to 12,000 street robberies in that particular area. And then let's just have a look at the Western Cape as an example. There we go. So again, the strong association with the metropolitan areas in the Western Cape and also the garden root areas. But again, you can see that the numbers of crimes in those areas. So in terms of the eventual situation, it's very much a Gauteng phenomenon followed by the Western Cape and then probably followed by KwaZulu-Natal and the other provinces. But the advantage is that all the statistics that are associated with all of the different crimes in relation to all the crimes associated with, the, with this particular particular province at this moment in time because we've selected it allows us to have a look and see what the situation is in that particular area. So just by clicking on it, we can very quickly see which are the stations in the Western Cape because we've selected for the Western Cape, which we have got the highest numbers. And we'll come back to this a little bit later as we go through the presentation. So I'm just going to go back to our presentation and Chris can continue with what he's been talking about. And this is the street public robbery trend. Now, we took the trend from 2003 4, which was in those days we decided, even when I was at the police at the CIAC, that was decided as a base year because that year was after the moratorium on crime statistics and when the crime statistics were purified and the whole system were reorganized. So in 2003 4, there were 105, 690 street robberies. And then you see that the years go running there, the top part of this table reflect the years 2003 to 4, and then up to 11, 12. And I did it a little bit deliberately like that, because those were the years of two commissioners, Commissioner Salebi, the late Commissioner Salebi, and then Commissioner Kele which is now the minister. Now, if you look at those years, in those years, there were very powerful initiatives to do visible policing. I will highlight all the, the red figures that you see there. The real figure de decreases. 5,000, there's 9,000, there's 14,000, and so are mostly as a result of visibility based on intelligence. You will see there was one year, six, seven, when there was a slight increase of 951. Now, if people can remember the history, 2006-7 was a very bad year for South Africa. It was the security guard strike. And during the security guard strike, many people were killed and there was a lot of street public robbery because it was a bit of a chaos. And then just in the year after that, the government and the South Africa Police Service did a special effort to bring down street public robbery again. And there we had the highest decrease of 14,037. When we look here, 2012, 2013 to 2019-20, there's the, the real figures. And there you see the increases. You see increase of 2,533 in 12, 13, 
then it became uh, eight six and it went and it grew all the time the only decrease was in 1718 when we had a decrease of 1600 but all of the others even on the last year there was an increase of 2466 so we went back to where we were basically in 2003-4. And this is as a result of problems in intelligence, a lack of intelligence, but it is also that then influence visible policing because you don't have visible policing and you don't have visible policing where you need to have it at a certain time of the day at a certain hotspot. So this is clear a difference between those two years. Now, this was the year that General Ria Pieja arrived at the police service, and then we had a lot of instability in the top management as well, because for all these years, there were a lot of fluctuations between commissioners, commissioners which were suspended, and all of that, and it's still going on. I have already highlighted the large increases of 1314 and 1415. I may have just skipped one thing. These two years, uh, 9, 10, and 10, 11, which was the years of General Kele, or now the Minister Kele, there you see a 11.2 and a 10.2% decrease. That was also the World Cup. During the World Cup, special attention were paid to make South Africa street robbery free in certain areas like Santon, even in our CBDs, because, I mean, some of our sport fields or soccer Soccer fields were in the CBD, like Ellis Park and Loftus Fairfield and so on, or in the area just surrounding the CBD. So there were special efforts in those years, and you can see the result of that. Next slide is the top 30 stations for this crime. Now, this slide really tell us a story. Actually, all the data released by the South African Police Service during the past year and previously but I must congratulate them on the statistics and the detailed statistics that they release in the quarterly and in the annual report of the last year and so. This tells us an absolute story. You will see all the CBD areas in this top 20. You'll start off with Johannesburg Central at 1,429. Then you have Heelbrow, which is not a CBD, but it's just adjacent to the CBD of Johannesburg Central. Then you find what I call a mega township like Nyanga and Kailicha. And this Kailicha would never disappear from the screen. Even if there was a commission in 2013, 14, a commission of inquiry into Kailicha, things have not changed there at all. Then you get Durban Central, again a CBD. And then we can go down the list. We get mega townships, we get areas like Jeppe just adjacent to, to, again, Johannesburg Central. It's sort of in the periphery. You get Pretoria Central. Then you go to another more bigger township. Then you go to Cape Town, to Mufuleni. Then you get to Sunnyside, again, the periphery of Pretoria Central, Cape Town Central, and we can continue. We even have Bloemfontein here in the name of Park Road. And then very worrying is basically Santa. Because Santon, we must remember years ago, I, when I joined the police service, there was a major problem in Santon with especially the robbery of cell phones. And many people were stabbed. And many of those people were actually overseas tourists because Santon had become the hub of overseas tourists, although at the present moment we don't have them, but also of businessmen. I mean, if people come from overseas to come and visit, the chances that they will stay in Santon is quite high. And you will see there that is in the top 30 with 472 street robberies. So this is actually quite, but all of them are worried. Everybody, even in Kailicha, if we look at that. And my view is that this is actually giving us a lot of murders as well. This generates a lot of murders. I just want to refer to this, the Kailicha analysis. Many years ago, when I was still at the CIAC, I did a analysis of Kailicha, just the bigger Kailicha. This was actually done in preparation for the police to go to the commission of inquiry into Kailicha. You will remember the commission of Judge O'Regan and Advocate Piccoli. Now, that was done there. And then it became a public document. After I retired, it became a public document. I also gave evidence at the Kailicha Commission. 
and I use that one quite often in documents because it was one of the most interesting analysis that I ever did. I always thought that the problem in Kailicha is what we have everywhere, social murder, murder which occur when we have too much to drink and then we, we have a fight and an argument and then people kill each other, but not intentionally, but, but as an accident. But when we analyze Kailicha, a third of the murders in Kailicha in those years, that was about 2012, a third of the murders were murders as a result of street public robbery. It was bodies that they pick up in the morning, people who were clearly murdered for their money or for their cell phone or whatever. Then a third was the reaction, what I call the reaction on the street public robberies, which we have seen yesterday, very close to us here. Uh, I will go to that just in a minute. But in Kailicha, a third of the killings were vigilante killings, it was vigilante mob killings. And then a third were other kinds of killings, gang, social murders, those kind of things. So we have just seen yesterday, Zanspreit, here next to Rudepoort, actually. At Zanspreit, four people were murdered and five is in the hospital. And last week, there were a whole range of vigilante killings in Pumalanga, but all of them is the cause of crime that occurred. And mostly of these crimes were street robberies. Okay, places where murders occurred. The stats the police have just released for the last quarter. But if we go back to the other quarters, if we even go back to this year, 1920, we find a very similar pattern, a very similar pattern. And that is that most of our murders occur in public places. And where does our street robberies occur and our public robberies is in public places. Then mode of transport, public transport, there's quite, and if you count these things together, then you will find that a large percentage of our murder occur on what I call pe on people going to work or from work to home, especially after dark. A lot of people is getting killed in that specific situation. And that also indicate to me that street public robbery play a much bigger role than we ever think. On the cause of the factors, I will not concentrate so much on that. If we look at the cause of the factors of murder, there is a, a chunk which is arguments, 38,8%. But then there, 19.4% is robbery. But this is only of 40% of the dockets because many of the dockets can't be analyzed because there is no indication of motive, causative factors, any hypothesis why this person was killed. But robbery is quite a large chunk of the known dockets. Then vigilante action, the reaction on the robbery is quite a large chunk. So I think if we control street public robbery, if we can lower street public robbery, we will also address the murder, which is just increasing year on year. Even if you do a quarterly and monthly analysis, because in this detailed report, which was released since the beginning of the financial year, the quarterly releases, there's also monthly analysis. And it shows clearly the moment that you have a lockdown, you have a lockdown like we had in last year, this time in March to April and a part of May. If you have that very hard lockdown and people can't move, you see streets empty, then there is no, logically, no street robberies or very few, or say only 20%, it goes down. And then again, we saw the very same happening in the beginning of December this year, beginning of January, very much the same. Then if you do an attempted murder analysis, because those people are alive, those who are murdered can't talk, so we, we pick up bodies in the morning, but we, we don't know how they were killed and was it street robbery or was it something else? But if we take attempted murder, because these people can talk, you also get a very clear indication that street public robbery is quite rife and that many of our murders could be a, as a result of that. Stations where it occur. Well, I've just shown you the stations, the top 30, but we can also look at broader. But if we look at stations where it occur, it is clearly on and those stations, the CBDs, people travel there on a daily basis. And then from the CBD, to the mega townships where most of these workers stay. And they move there sometimes late at night and they get killed.
We've had a look at the distribution of the data for South Africa. Again, I just want to emphasize this is the viewer which one can get access to off our web portal. It provides all of the numbers of crime statistics in the country at a police station level. But I just wanted to give you an understanding. You know, we in many instances, there's a lot of information available in South Africa on crime statistics, whether it's in a tabular format, whether it's in reports, and, and to some extent also on web mapping technologies. But in many instances, it's a very static view. And utilizing the technology that we're using here, we can do quite a lot of sophisticated analysis in being able to do what we call filtering. So I just wanted to give you an idea. What we are doing here is we're using what we call a quantile approach, and we've classified the police stations in terms of the number of street or public robberies into these different classes. So the highest class that you've got at the top here is this particular red class here, which means that in that high incident, there are 63,000 people of the, of the total that are in the high class of the different police stations. Now, what we are able to do is to go and then start looking at it from an analytical point of view. And in essence, what's happened is that by us doing a selection of that high category of street public robbery, we can now look at any of the other crimes that are recorded and reported on by the South African police. So what one can see, for example, is that the red colored charts here are violent crimes, the social fabric crimes are the green colored crimes, and then also you've got the, the poverty crimes, which are the purplish color. Now, if you have a look at the extent of this red area, it gives you an indication as to in relation to the high category of street public robbery, what is the strongest correlation in terms of the other crimes in South Africa? Now, we can analyze this utilizing other variables, for example, the size of the population, other environmental factors, and, and I'm sure that the, the general and, and brigadiers from the police or Professor Britska will give us some thoughts in terms of what are the, some of these particular factors could be. But what one sees is that by the fact that this is the highest level of redness associated with aggravated robbery, in essence, it's saying to you, when you do a statistical analysis, police stations where you've got high incidence of street public robbery are police stations which have high incidence of aggravated robbery. And as public street robbery is a subcategory of this particular crime category, that makes a lot of sense. But if one looks at it in terms of some of the other robberies or crimes, as an example, so attempted murder, it is also an area where there are fairly high levels of attempted mm. murder, as well as common assault in those particular areas and residential premises as well. Well, if one looks at assault GBA, the top category is slightly less. And then if one goes to carjacking, it's an area where carjacking is strongly correlated and then murder. So murder is not as strong, but there is a strong correlation. So what these statistics are saying is that in areas where you've got street public robbery, which is a subcategory of aggravated robbery, there are other crimes which are associated. And Chris and I had a conversation about this a little bit earlier, and it emphasizes to us that in dealing with some of the other critical crimes that we are facing in South Africa, we need to be looking at how do we deal with street public robbery. And as he's pointed out, that's about visible policing and intelligence-based policing. So this just gives you an idea of what one can do. And if one, for example, has a look at this and says, okay, well, let's take, for example, common assault. If I select that particular area, as you can see, all of the charts have now changed and a particular perspective in terms of what are the police stations which have high incidence of street public robbery and in this particular instance also have high levels of common assault? Now, if we go back to the original view of the map, you can very quickly see that these are the police stations that are listed down here in terms of who they are and we can always prioritize them. So at the top of the list in terms of police stations which have got high incidence of both street public robbery as well as common robbery, you'll see that uh, Johannesburg Central remains a high. And in terms of the rank or the order of these police stations, there is not a significant difference. There are some police stations that have been dropped off the list. And we can see that in terms of the street robbery or public robbery, those which have high incidence of street robbery as well as common robbery makes up about 54,000 of these crimes in South Africa. And the map shows you where those particular 
particular facilities are. If you're wanting to go to any one of those particular P stations, you're able to zoom in on them and to collect information on that. So this is uh, Lichtenberg as an example, and one can have a look at the numbers of crimes that are happening in that particular. It's the most recent year of, of crime statistics at a P station. So you've got access to this information and I think that this is a powerful mechanism for not only research purposes and more informed decision making in South Africa, but I think it's important for the people of our country to be able to get access to this information in a readily usable format so that they can partner with the South African police, they can engage with the CPFs, they can engage age with politicians and government officials to look at how we can address these particular issues in these high priority crimes. And this is in essence what this analytical tool is doing is it's saying if you look at a whole range of factors or a whole range of crimes, you can start to identify which are the high priority police stations in relation to many of the crimes that are associated with one another where you need to be focusing your attention. Now what should be done? Well, the first thing I want to say is when I listened to the release last Friday, it seems to me that the police management and even the minister, unfortunately, have some preconceived ideas of what is now causing this murder, for example. There was no mention of street robbery because since about 2014, I think that's the last report where I saw some mentioning of street robbery and some data on it. But since about 2014, 15, there was no figures published separately on street public robbery. You can calculate it if you want to, but there was no separate figures. And there's no special mentioning made of this crime, which I think affect a lot of very poor people in this country. We mentioned carjacking, which affect the more affluent people, but we don't mention this one. But police management, should look at these figures, look at everything which was released to the public, and I will again want to congratulate them. But they have a preconceived idea that most of our murders is caused by alcohol. But I think we must not have a preconceived idea that that's our main generator. It is generating violence and it is generating murders. But we must look at things like street robbery. That's the first thing. This data that is released is talking to an analyst. And it should also talk to the decision makers. And also the analysts that we have in this country should also analyze and then talk to the decision makers. My recipe, if I can give the recipe, I see it in the table, the trend, that crime trend, where we have all those rates decreases in the, the years 2003 to 2012. We have all those decreases. Those were the years of constant high visibility based on intelligence. And then much of that intelligence, 80, 90% of that intelligence is exactly what we presented this morning. I'm, I'm actually the presenter of Station South Africa this morning. I'm the CIAC of Station South Africa. Because this data tells you where you should focus, what time should you focus there. And the police even have much more detailed GIS data where they know each street corner where this, or each taxi rank, where this street robberies is happening. So if they want to really do something, they should do what they've done between 2.3 and 2.12. Acknowledge street public robbery. It should be acknowledged. It should be mentioned very strongly in releases of crime stats. And the public should be told that this is a real problem. And not the people who are the victims of this crime should be told this, but actually the people for who they work. There are many restaurant owners, bar owners, factory owners, which I think could spend much more time thinking and paying for the safe return of their workers to where they live and from the workers going from home to work. I think much more attention should be paid by the public sector. I just want to do a search quickly because I'd like to talk about the point that you've made here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter in here. Sunnyside. Or let's try Sunnyside, shall we? Yeah, um, Sunnyside. Okay, so we're selecting Sunnyside. I'm just going to zoom in on that particular area. And there's Sunnyside as an example. So we're looking at street robbery in relation to that. But down at the bottom here, we've got all of the statistics associated with 
sunny side. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so we can see those figures. So if one has a look at the numbers of crime happening in Sunnyside as an example, street common robbery makes up 522 of the crimes in that area. And just to emphasize that having selected that, we're looking at 522 for this particular crime. So when we go in, one can start to look at you know, what is the situation here? So 522 in Sunnyside is predominantly. Motor vehicle theft is 1,400, a lot higher. And then other forms of theft, you're looking at about 1,600, followed by aggravated robbery. So the situation is, is that as street public robbery is a subcategorization of aggravated robbery, you can see that it's a high proportion of the aggravated robberies that are happening in this particular area. And there are probably strong associations between that in terms of other forms of crime, like common assault, as an example, common robbery, as an example, and also motor vehicle theft. So it gives you a perspective is that if you're focusing on a particular um, police station, one can start to look at this in a different view in terms of saying, what are the crimes that you should focus on, which are associated with one another, which contribute towards one another in addressing the situation in that particular police station. Now, let me just quickly add that presenting the data purely as numbers does not give you as full a picture as what it should do. And as a consequence, we are developing another portal where people will be able to subscribe to it, where we will show you the ratios because we've got the most up-to-date population statistics for South Africa at a police station level. We will look at it in terms of short-term trends, long-term trends, and also the utilization of what I consider to be one of the most powerful indicators of crime, and that is the utilization of the location quotient. A location yeah. quotient looks at the average of a particular crime in a particular police station in relation to that crime in the national situation. And it determines from that perspective whether a particular crime in a police station is above or below expectation in terms of the number of crimes in that area. So we can start to look at the situation in South Africa and continue to have this conversation that we're having in terms of what the situation is in relation to particular crimes and what we should be looking at in terms of how we should go about addressing these crimes in South Africa. 